Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at managing fragments and I'm going to take this application that we've already developed and I'm going to remove the top fragment here and we're going to look at how you can swap this particular fragment, this lower fragment, for the top fragment here. So we're going to look at swapping one fragment with another and one of the great things about fragments is that you can swap them around and reuse them and they're, they're generally kind of very flexible elements of the user interface that can be swapped around and changed around. So I'm going to modify this application a bit. I've made a copy of my original application, copied it to this new application called Fragment Manager and I'm going to go to my layout which is in res layout and it's it's this one activity main.xml and um, I'm going to remove one of the fragments from here so at the moment I've got this product fragment that shows an image of my course and I've got this list fragment and I'm going to get rid of product fragment altogether and I'm going to let's just put the list fragment at the top to make it a look look a bit nicer and then I'm going to go to let's save that and I'm going to go to the main activity here and I've got some code in, in here that gets the product fragment and changes the course uh, product icon in it in response to stuff that happens in the list fragment so I'm going to comment that out for the moment in fact, um, no, I won't. What I'll do is, I'm in this in the original application. I got the product fragment from the layout because the layout was creating it. And now that I've just removed this second fragment from the layout, what I'm going to do instead is, instead of saying product fragment equals get fragment manager dot find fragment by ID, I'm just going to say product fragment equals new product fragment. So I'm going to create this fragment directly in the code. Um, not product manager, product fragment. So instead of having it in the layout, I've now got it in the code. And I'm going to run that, and I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work for a reason that I will explain in a minute. But the basic idea is we want to have one fragment initially in the layout, and then I want to replace that with another fragment which I create in the code. And we're going to see how to do that in this tutorial. So let's take a look at what progress this is making. And I've got a error here, as I expected. And let's just see, check that it is the error that I expected. And it's complaining about a null pointer exception. And if I scroll up a bit, we can probably see that it is. So it's in main activity, and it's saying. I don't know if I've got a line number in here. It probably is if I look down carefully enough. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that rather than strain my eyes over this for the moment because I already know where the error is. And the, the problem is that if we look what this is doing, I'm creating a fragment in code and then I'm calling product fragment dot set course. And if I look at my product fragment here, I'll use F3 to go to it, then set course assumes that the fragment view has been created and initialized and it hasn't. If I just do new product fragment then the view hasn't been initialized so I'm going to get an error here. And I want to change this around a bit because what I'd like to do is I've initially got my course fragment on display and I want to make it so that when the user clicks one of those courses in the list that it, it creates this new product fragment at that point in on course item clicked here. This is my on click method for my fragment. And um, then swaps the list for the product fragment showing the correct product. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of this for the moment and I'm going to paste this down here in the on click. So the idea is that when the user clicks the item, we'll create the product fragment in code. And now we want to put that into the view somehow. 
and I'm still going to have to do set course. But if I do it here, I think we'll still have the same problem because if I just create the product fragment, no matter what I do, even if I put some code in here that then swaps into the main view, it's still not going to be properly initialized at that point, I, I don't think. I think that we have to uh, we would have to get out of this method and let the let the kind of whatever is going on in the background on the main UE thread would have to let that do its thing before the product before we can um, talk about the product view product fragment view. So the bottom line is basically I'd like to just pass some initialization initialization data to my constructor, and then I'd like to be able to say that when on create view runs that it will then run this code for this particular application so that um, I'm only doing I'm only messing around with the view in on create view rather than trying to do it rather than trying to create the fragment in code here and then immediately do stuff with the view which I don't think is going to work so what I'll do is I will go to my cons I'll create a constructor because I haven't got one already I'll still bung in a default constructor in case I want to use that. So let's put in product fragment. Uh, and then I'll add another constructor, public product fragment, in which I can pass some initialization data, which will be a course in this case. And there are other ways you can pass data to fragments. I'm just going to give this a private instance variable for my initialization data. But um, here, I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. So the construct will take the course that's going to initialize my fragment, the course object that I created, and I'm just going to say this dot course equals course in the constructor. And now, in um, in on create view, we could say once we've got the view, once we've inflated the view, I could say if course is not equal to null then I could further initialize the view and I kind of need a set course method that takes a view rather than doing get view here and I want to keep my original set course method um, for the case where we, we embed the fragment in XML and get it out of there and use it that way so I'm just going to I'm just going to copy this and let's have two set courses here and one of them the public one which just takes the data to set set up my fragment with that is going to do view get view and view equals get view and it's going to call this other set course which is going to take a course and a view and I'm going to make this private and kind of a lot of what I'm doing here is really just specific to my own particular application. And so if, if you're getting a bit lost, then my apologies. And I'd say don't worry about it. But the bottom line is, I, I just want to point out that when you create a product, when you create a fragment in code, then you can't immediately rely on the view existing because you've got to kind of um, let the user interface thread do its thing and you've got to let it call on create view to actually create the view. So what I'm doing is I'm just changing things so that I pass the initialization data in and I don't try to mess around with the view anywhere except in on create view. So I'll pass in a course here and my view and the course is the one that I passed into the constructor. So I think that will work and then I'll leave this original set course um, not that one, the, uh, the public method here because once your fragment is in the XML and it's up and running and, and the view is initialized then I don't see any reason why we can't then do get view and mess around with it there but it's just when we first try to set it up we don't immediately have a view to play around with because on create view has not been called when we do new fragment Okay, so um, I'm going to get rid of this line here, which is going to is going to cause problems, and we don't need that now for the moment. And I'll pass my course in here. 
So now we, we've got a fully initialized fragment that's created in code. Well, it's not fully initialized, but it's got all the stuff it needs to be initialized. And now I'm going to show you the kind of real meat of this tutorial finally, which is um, how to actually put that fragment in place. And the idea is your, your application, it can swap fragments around um, potentially like crazy. And we're just swapping one fragment for another here, but you could do all kinds of stuff. And we, we do that within a fragment transaction. We say get fragment manager dot start, not start, um, begin transaction. And that returns a fragment transaction. So we'll say fragment transaction trans, let's say, equals get fragment manager dot begin transaction. Then we muck around with fragments. And when we finish mucking around with the fragments, we can say trans dot commit. And the reason for this is, um, let's just take a look at this thing here. Um, oh yeah, I've got that. I've actually, sometimes I find that when I do control shift O, I accidentally put in the wrong import. And there's this Android support library that's intended for adding newer functionality into older applications. There's this extra support library that can go into your older application and then gives you a lot of the things like the trans like fragment um, facilities that you that should only exist in post version 11 Android in this case. So I think I've, if I go up to my import here, I should not have added this because this is I don't need the support library because this is the minimum SDK version for this um, this particular application is at least 11. So I'm just going to delete that and do Control Shift O again and make sure I add this one instead. So you you start a, um, you begin a transaction here and then you mess around with your fragments, swap them in and out however you like, and then you do trans dot commit and it's trans dot commit that will actually perform all the changes that you specified between these two lines and it will do it in kind of one kind of um, single block. So I, I suppose the idea is to avoid um, seeing fragments being swapped about on the screen and avoid having the application in an in inconsistent state with um, some fragments that you want to be there and others not. So you kind of swap them all at once. I guess that's the idea between, behind the fragment transaction thing. And in the middle here, I'm going to say trans dot replace, and I'm going to pass in for the ID r dot id dot product. I think it is maybe not product. Yeah, list. That's it. And this is the ID of the fragment that I'm initially going to have in my layout when the uh, when the application starts up. It's this fragment here. So I'm going to say that I want to replace this fragment with my new fragment here that I just created. And I'm passing all the initialization data into the constructor here so that after, I guess after commit has run, at some point it's going to, the system will call on create view. And that's where it's going to use the initialization data that I passed to my constructor. And I'm laboring this point just a little bit because I'm not sure it's, uh, I'm not sure it's completely clear. But let's run that and see how it looks. So I've got my, I've got, um, I'm using actually an emulator here rather than my phone just for a change. And here it is. Let's actually clear the, the old error there. Go to the console and it says starting. And I've got this thing about the trace file, but um, I'm not really sure what it's complaining about, to be honest. So I'll, 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 I'll ignore that. And here's my um, application now. So I've, we've got a one frag fragment to start with. And then in the on click, when I click one of these, it swaps out that fragment for the fragment that I created in code and puts this fragment in its place. Now I just want to show you one more thing in this tutorial, which is that this kind of fragment manager actually manages a whole stack of fragments. And at the moment, if the user clicks the back button like this, then we will clear straight out the application. But what I can do is, after I've replaced the fragment, 
I can I can add the um, I can say trans dot I think it's add to backstack there we go and pass in null there and, and what this does is it's going to add the old state of the application to a, to a kind of stack which we can then go back to so when a user clicks the back button um, it's as it when, when we say add to back stack it's like adding a plate to a stack of plates and when the user cl clicks the back button in effect we're taking this plate off again and going back to the original stack of plates and looking at that so it's, it's a stack um, it's, it's, it's a stack in normal programming terms and it's a stack of kind of application states so now if I run this what's going to happen is when the user clicks the back button we will pop the latest um, committed transaction off the stack and go back to what we had originally so we'll go back to the list and we'll, we'll return to our original screen which for this particular little application of course is going to be extremely useful let's go back to the emulator I'm not sure if this is the current running version or not let's check the console and it says that it has um, started by the looks of it so now I'll click one of these let's try this one and then I'll click the back button and now we're going back to the list it's magic um, because it remembered the previous fragment state of the application and it remembered what fragments were being displayed and we can go back to them so you can obviously this is very very powerful and you can do all kinds of things with that and create very flexible user interfaces and it's probably a lot more useful for a bigger screen um, because this I'm just using a little emulator screen here but I, I could use a bigger emulator and we could have fragments all over the screen swapping in and out but because it would strain my ingenuity to think of um, a, a realistic example of that I, I'll leave it at that and I'll let you um, be creative with the fragments there so that's it for this tutorial and until next time happy coding